Hello, and welcome to our next edition of the Foundation's Speaker Series. My name is Michelle. Today, I'm being joined by Mr. Stephen Williams. Stephen is the Associate Director of the Pennsylvania Statewide After School Youth Development Network, or also known as Poseidon. Poseidon helps connect youth with out-of-school time opportunities. Poseidon serves nearly 3,000 members from the Center for Schools and Communities located in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Stephen, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Pleasure. Here we go. Now, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about Poseidon as we move mm -hmm. a, a further along here in this interview, but let's start way back in the beginning of your career prior to coming uh, to Poseidon. Um, as I, I understand you worked uh, for the legislature. Can you tell yep. us a little bit about your time there? Sure. Yeah. So I started working for the General Assembly uh, in 2013. Uh, I served in various roles there, uh, starting with uh, the district uh, office of district operations and outreach where i worked folk, uh, mostly with uh, newly elected members and their staff in their districts uh, and helped them connect with resources here in harrisburg from there i moved on to the finance committee where i was the research analyst uh, under representative jake wheatley uh, and <clears throat> in that role i actually that was actually where i spent most of my time working for the capitol uh, and i worked on legislation uh, that was going through that committee and then I also worked on legislation that Representative Wheatley uh, was interested in. And so I would do the research, I would draft it or help draft it, uh, and then you know work on co-sponsorship memos and seek out uh, co-sponsors for that legislation. From there, I moved on to work in leadership under Representative Sterla. Uh, he was the policy chair at the time. Uh, and that was actually mostly during COVID. So uh, actually that was the least amount of time I actually engaged with my boss. Uh, only because of proximity and we were always virtual. <clears throat> and then my last role uh, prior to leaving the Capitol, I was the uh, executive director for the Allegheny delegation. Uh, and that was composed of members from the Allegheny uh, region and part of the state. So, uh, and the chair at the time, well, still is the chair, was Representative Austin Davis. So it was quite the experience. You know, I learned a lot. Uh, it was fun, engaging. You know, um, I was in youth and government in high school. So this was, like, you know, a dream fulfilled working for the Capitol uh, in different capacities and, and meeting people from all walks of life and, you know, from the very high uh, down to people who are dealing with, you know, serious economic and social issues. Uh, but it, as a whole, was a very rewarding experience. Wow, yes, sounds like it. And so being at Poseidon is a fairly new um, role for you within the last year or so, correct? Yep, I uh, started in March. However, I was uh, connected with Poseidon since 2015. Uh, so my boss at the time, who I referenced, uh, Jake Wheatley, he was also the chair of the After School Caucus. And <clears throat> the After School Caucus was uh, closely connected with Poseidon. And that's how I got uh, in touch with those folks. So since 2015 to now, I've been engaged with Poseidon in some capacity. But starting in March uh, of this year, I took over as the associate director. Wow, see, it's who you know. It's all about being connected <laughs> with people and networking, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and now, uh, Stephen, how did you know you wanted to get involved in public policy and advocacy? I know you mentioned in high school you were you had some programs that you were involved in there. Is that where it all started? Yeah, you know what? It's funny because uh, so when I was 18, that was when Barack Obama was running for president. Uh, and that's really what spurred my interest uh, in you know, being a, more engaged. Uh, that was the first presidential election I was able to vote in, and it was a historic election. So that was really significant. Um, <clears throat> and so as a result of that, I got involved with youth and government. And the director of youth and government or, or club director was a gentleman named Dave John, who is actually the government affairs uh, director now for the YMCA. Uh, and so we work closely together because of our roles uh, with respect to out-of-school time programming. So it's all come sort of full circle with respect to the folks that I'm engaged with. But um, but yeah, I think it started with Barack and then it also transitioned to youth and government. And then, you know, this time spent with the legislature, just, you know, it was what I wanted to do. And I doubled down on my education, too. So I went and got my master's degree in public policy uh, so that, you know, I could be as effective as possible. Excellent. Very neat. So for our viewers who are watching this video and maybe they want to get involved with uh, policy and advocacy, how, how do they go about doing that? Where would they start? Where would you recommend? What advice would you give our viewers? Oh, uh, so <clears throat> I think one of the major ways to get involved or to be more engaged is to connect with your local leaders. 
So there is a big emphasis always put on, you know, the presidency or, you know, uh, the, or Congress or, or these high level folks. But most times the policies that impact you the greatest are made at the local level. So reaching out to your school board directors, uh, reaching out to your city council folks, uh, reaching out to your mayor, if, if that's the <clears throat> type of municipality you're in, uh, you know, reaching out to your locally elected officials and talking to them about what's important to you and what uh, is, is impacting you, that's, that's where I would start. And these are the most accessible people. You know, chances are you're not getting the president on the phone, <laughs> but you can talk to your school board director. I am a school board director, so I can speak firsthand about that. Uh, you know, you're constantly talking to folks in the community about the issues that they're dealing with. And so, <clears throat> and so these folks are, are far more accessible and I would start there. Moving up the chain just a little bit, uh, you know, reaching out to your state reps, your state senators, while maybe a little bit uh, more difficult than your locally elected officials, they're still very accessible. You know, you can always schedule a time to go meet with your state rep, talk about the things that are concerning you and making your voice heard. Uh, those, are, those are the ways in which I would start. And then the last thing I would share is that when it comes to advocacy, you know, running for office yourself, uh, a lot of time <clears throat> and uh, an emphasis is put on, you know, talking to the current policymakers. But part of advocacy is becoming a policymaker yourself. So I encourage folks to always run for office if they can, if they feel uh, drawn to it. I know it's it can be tough, uh, and sometimes the barriers to entry can seem very high. But you know, running for office, being an agent of change in your own community, uh, that's definitely a path uh, forward in terms of advocacy. Wonderful advice. Love it. Very good. Now let's move forward here a little bit um, and let's talk a little bit more about Poseidon itself. What it, what exactly is Poseidon um, and, and, and what do you do in your particular role? Sure. Yeah, Poseidon, the Pennsylvania Statewide <clears throat> After School Youth Development Network is one of 50 uh, after school networks in the country. Uh, so Poseidon is actually one of the older ones. It started in 2004, but we, sorry. we all have a similar mission, and that is advocating for ways in which to support the out-of-school time community uh, in our respective states. Uh, and that can, that can come about in various ways. So, you know, one of the things that we do is advocate for uh, after-school programming in Pennsylvania. Uh, that means talking with policymakers over on the Hill about <clears throat> things that are important to the out-of-school time community, ways in which the state can be supportive of the out-of-school time community. But it also means that we deliver on our grants that we have uh, and those focus on college and career readiness. They focus on STEM. They focus on uh, social emotional learning uh, and really prioritizing, you know, uh, young people uh, that are coming from underserved communities. So that can be students from rural areas that might not have access to uh, the greatest or, or uh, a lot of options in terms of out of school time programming. But it also means uh, reaching out to young people in urban settings uh, and folks that just, you know, historically have not had as great access to out of school type programs. So, yeah, and that's, that's so that's the same. <laughs> yeah, and then, oh, what do I do? Sorry. Um, my, my job, you know, as the director is to help steer the ship, you know, uh, engage with those, uh, those policymakers that I referenced earlier, uh, and to help sort of set a course for the action that Poseidon is going to uh, go down. And then also talk with the other network leads and get insights from them on the type of work that they're doing uh, that can be replicated here in Pennsylvania. Wonderful. Uh, and, and Stephen, what um, what age or, or grade levels, if you will, do you primarily work with? Oh, so we 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 work with young people from uh, the entire so from very young uh, that are traditionally like kindergarten age up through high school age students. But I will say that we are a little less hands on in terms of actually working with young people. We work with the sites that serve the young people. So sure. I'll give you an example, uh, Sunrise, which is a out of school time program in Philadelphia. We work with Sunrise and then Sunrise then works directly with the young people. I see. And that led me to my next question. It was, well, I imagine you work closely with a lot of other organizations and groups um, such as you mentioned Sunrise and perhaps maybe like uh, YMCA and others. What, so what are some of the other organizations that you do work with? Yeah, so, so Sunrise, we work with a lot of 21st century grant programs, which okay. are usually out of school time programs uh, that are funded from 21st century grant funding, which is a federal grant. Uh, we also work closely with the Pennsylvania State Alliance of YMCA's, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Um, 
the United Way. You know, there's a whole host of different organizations that we work with uh, <clears throat> and all with a similar mission. PENSACA, which is a Pennsylvania school-age child care association. Uh, I get so used to the acronym, sometimes I forget what they stand for. But um, we, we work closely with these organizations, all with the mission of serving youth and communities uh, in the out-of-school time space. That's wonderful, wonderful work. Anything that we can do to prepare you know, students for, for their future, no matter what they decide to do, is, is all phenomenal work. And we're thrilled to be able to partner with you and Satan as well in that whole process. Um, now, Stephen, um, for our viewers that are watching, which could be um, youth, um, it could be adults, um, how can um, they get more involved in their communities or with Poseidon? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I'll start with Poseidon. Uh, we have a, a newsletter that goes out regularly. We have an advocacy day that we're planning for up uh, in Harrisburg uh, on March 29th, which is going to be in the Capitol. Uh, we have various webinars that we put on. Um, and these are connected to sometimes, these are sometimes connected to our, our grants that we're um, executing on. Uh, I can give you a perfect example. We were recently, we recently partnered with NASA on uh, implementing a uh, STEM learning module that NASA has created. And so we are helping part, we, so we're helping bring out of school time program sites to the table so that they can participate in this NASA uh, program that they created. So, <clears throat> so that's one way. Um, and then the second question was how do folks get involved with their communities? Yes. So um, again, that kind of ties back to, you know, reaching out to who your uh, policymakers are locally. Um, but also, you know, uh, figuring out what it is that you strongly care about and deciding on how you can make a change in your community. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you an example, just something small that I did a long time ago. Uh, Harrisburg, where I live, is a food desert. Uh, I, I prefer to call it a nutritional desert because there are food options. However, they're like McDonald's and it's not very good. So, you know, I saw that there was this, this need in Harrisburg and I liked to garden, so I took on creating, or, or I should say rehabilitating, a local um, community garden in the area. And that's, that's a form of advocacy, that's a form of recognizing that there is a need and that you have an interest, and then pairing those things together uh, so that you can start making change in your community. And that can take shape in multiple ways, you know, um, you know it depends on what is your core driver. Uh, I also, I, I encourage people to look at themselves and, you know, do a little bit of self-reflection because uh, advocacy is hard work. And so having some sort of internal driver uh, <clears throat> that helps you push through when things are tough or when you're getting a lot of no's, when you should be getting yeses or when you feel like you should be getting yeses, you know, having something that you can lean on internally in terms of that advocacy is, is very important. I uh, love it. You know, finding finding that passion that you have and um, putting it to use and, you know, fulfilling that that need um, mm -hmm. that's out there. That's wonderful. I love it. Now, um, as it, we're starting to wrap things up here a little bit, but um, any kind of, you know, closing remarks or words of wisdom um, that you'd like to, to share with our, our viewers? Yeah. Um, so I would I would say <clears throat> in terms of, you know, uh, a nugget of wisdom to leave you with is we are everyone is aware of living through a very politically divisive uh, time. But some insights that I was shared recently or shared with me recently that I thought was just so profound, it's, it's simple, but it's so profound. And it's to focus on making small connections. Um, we oftentimes in terms of policymakers or advocates or, or just folks that are you know, politically engaged, we're always so focused on how do you connect you know, this person that's over here, sorry, it's off camera, person that's over here to a person that's over here. And there seems like there's no way to span that gap. But if we focus on trying to make these small connections over time, we do bring people together. And I think that that, uh, I think if I was going to share a little bit of wisdom, that's what I would share. Uh, you know, we do have a lot more in common as society than people, than we, than we think we do. And focusing on those commonalities, I think is key to making change uh, really happen. Wow, well said. That's wonderful. Nuggets of wisdom that you yeah. shared. <laughs> and, and so much here today. Stephen, thank you. Thank you so very much for your time here today. Uh, not only for your time, but for all the wonderful information that you've shared on your life and your career, as well as for all that you, uh, the fine work that you are doing at Poseidon uh, for the, the students of Pennsylvania. So thank you yeah. so much.
Thank you for having me. This was fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. And and as I mentioned earlier, just to add in again, our, our organization, our foundation here is is truly, we're just thrilled to, to be able to partner with you and Poseidon and, and uh, you know, in offering some of the, uh, of the programming that our foundation offers, like Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week and SMG to the students and the organizations that you work with. So we're thrilled for that partnership. Thank you for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I mean, I don't know if you want to include this in the recording, but um, we are currently working on a proposal for a college and career readiness grant that tries to bring um, young people from underserved communities uh, and, and get them engaged with not just college and career readiness as we see it currently, but what are those new um, you know, careers and what does that, that new space look like in terms of the technology that we see uh, that's on the cutting edge nowadays. And the example that we've been leaning on is like augmented and virtual reality. So. You see these big companies investing a lot of time, money, and energy into you know what they call the metaverse, uh, but it's it's something that we've now are have recognized, and we're prepare, preparing a grant proposal that tries to get young people engaged in this new technology so that they are prepared for careers in the future and not just careers that we see currently. So. Oh, wonderful. That's <laughs> wonderful. Well, you heard it here, viewers. Uh, it, stay tuned. Coming soon, right? Here yeah. we go. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, uh, uh, for additional information about Poseidon, uh, be sure to check out their website at PSAYDN.org. Also, if any of our viewers would like to talk with Stephen individually, feel free to reach out to our offices and we'd be happy to connect you. Or uh, Stephen's contact information will also be provided following this interview. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Thanks again, Stephen, and thank you everybody for watching. Thank you.